Now I want to add the ability to draw filled polygons to our shape batcher. So let's go back to our shape batching class. Here was the last one we created, the draw circle fill. Right down here next to that, let's make a new function. We're going to call this draw polygon fill. As parameters, we're going to supply a list of vertices. So that'll be vector two list, and I'm going to call these vertices. We also want to provide the indices. This is going to be a list of index values that will define the triangles for the polygon. So this is going to be a list of integers. I'm going to call this triangle indices. We also need to pass in the transform class to allow the polygon to be transformed. Let's go and look up the line drawing. So just like this one here, we, we drew a polygon. Um, let's also provide the transform and the color. That'll be a flat transform and the color. Uh, first thing I want to do is just check these vertices and we'll just see if they're null. And the same thing for the indices. And I also want to check to make sure we have enough vertices to define a polygon. Let's just determine if the length of the vertices is less than three. We need at least three vertices to define a polygon. Uh, we'll, just throw a, we'll just throw a new uh, out of range exception on the vertices. And then same thing for the indices. If the length of the indices is less than three, we'll need three indices to, to define a polygon. And we'll just throw the same exception. Okay, so I'm going to leave that in there and I may just, um, we might just make this debug only code so we can, if we're in debug mode, if de debug is defined with the precompiler, then we will run this code. And if debug is not defined, then we'll skip it. So this will only show up for debugging. In fact, let's see if that's been defined. Yeah, so there I am in release mode now, and you can see it's not actually going to run this code. Let's just leave it like that for now. In release, I don't think we're going to need to check all this stuff, so yeah, let's just do that. The first thing we need to do is ensure that we've started. So let's ensure started. Then we just need to ensure that we have enough space to draw this polygon. And this is going to be more simple than the filled circle drawing routine, because all we need to do is just pass in the length of these arrays up here. Well, let's just pass in those, so the vertices length and the indices. That'll be the triangle indices length. We know we have enough space now. All we pretty much need to do now is just pass this information back through to the vertex and index array that's defined inside our shape batching class. And so we're just going to loop through each one of these. So it'll be the triangle indices and we're just going to pass them through to the indices array and increment the index count every time we do that. That'll be the triangle indices I. Actually, one more thing to do here. So just like we added the vertex count to each of the indices for the triangles, we need to do the same thing here. Let's add in the vertex count. Okay, that'll be good for the indices. Now let's pass through the vertices. And we're just going to pass the data through to the class vertex array. We'll increment the vertex count every time. We're going to say that, that that is going to be equal to a new vertex position color, and now we need to, to get the information. So first, let's get a vector 2 that has the vertex information. That'll just come from the uh, argument, the array that we passed in. So we'll get the first, we'll get the item that we're currently at. Let's go ahead and apply the transform to that data. Once we have the vertex, we will apply the transform function. Uh, the position will be the vertex, and the transform will be the one we passed in as the argument. So now we have the transformed vertex. We can pass it on over to our vertex position color. We need to define a vertex 3. Uh, that'll have the vertex x, the vertex y, and the z will always be 0. The color will just be the color we passed in up here. Once we have done that, let's increment the shape counter to let the batcher know that we have another shape. I think that should be it to draw a filled polygon. And since we're not actually doing the triangulation here or here, it actually is a little bit more simple than this one up here because we have to do all the calculations for the circle up here and then the, the triangulation. Down here, we're actually pre-computing the triangle indices and then just sending them in. And we're just basically just passing them on through to the uh, actual vertex and index arrays that will be used for rendering. Here's where we were before. So we're in our game class now. And to test this out, I want to take this polygon that we're rotating right here, and I want to change this to a filled polygon shape. Back in our game class, here's our draw polygon. I want to make this a draw polygon fill. We actually now need the triangle index information, so let's go ahead and create that up here. Here's our vertices. 
Uh, we're going to make the triangle indices now. Down here we'll define that right next to this one. That should have a this. Let me put that in here real quick. The indices, the triangle indices, will be a new integer array. And the number of indices is going to be the triangle count times 3. Remember the triangle count is going to be the number of sides minus 2. Let's go ahead and figure out the triangle count here. We'll just do a triangle count. The number of sides is the same as the number of vertices. So we can just say the vertices length minus 2. And then we'll just do the triangle count times three. I'm just going to manually start inputting all the triangle indices here. So let's do triangle indices uh, zero. That is just going to be zero. And let me see, how many of these do I actually need? So we have five vertices. Minus two means I'm going to have three triangles times three. So I'm going to need nine indices altogether. So I'm going to do this nine times. And let's go back to our picture that we drew here. Here's the actual ship we're drawing. The triangles are going to look something like this. And actually, let me draw, erase some of this other information that I had in there. So I don't need this anymore. Don't need that. So the, here's the actual triangles we're going to draw. So something like that and something like that. Okay, so we have three triangles. Um, the first three are going to be 0, 1, and 2. So 0, 1, and 2. Uh, the next ones are going to be 0, 2, and 3. So 0, 2, 3. And then the last three are going to be 0, 3, and 4. 0, 3, and 4. That should triangulate the polygon. We'll just go ahead and supply that information now. Uh, triangle indices. Okay, so should do the exact same thing we were doing before, except it, instead of having the outline of a polygon, we're, we're actually going to have a filled polygon now. And instead of color white, let's just change this to something else. Let's make it like a light green, just for some variation, and run that. And of course, there's errors. Let's find out. No overload method takes five arguments. Okay, and the reason is we don't need this. I think it's this one here. Which one was that? Um, yeah, so this was defining the thickness of the line for the for the non-filled function, so we just take that out, and yeah, that looks like what we need. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Okay, there we are. So we are now drawing filled polygons. The zoom feature looks just right. Okay, so that's how we draw filled polygons. Eventually, I'm going to make a routine that will automatically triangulate these shapes instead of us manually doing this here. Uh, I'm gonna make a function that will take care of all of this for us. We All we have to do is provide this and it will automatically triangulate the polygon. As long as it finds out that the polygon is simple, it can be either convex or concave and it'll do all of this triangulation work for us. So we'll just put in the vertices and it'll give us a list of indices for the triangles. But for now, that's how we draw our filled polygons.